Hey TV fans, it's Greg the TV Genius and I am a TV genius today. We're going to be talking about Salem Season 2 Episode 6. That episode is called I Met You by the Moonlight and wow, this is probably the best episode of the season. It started off, George Sibley is dead because of Countess Marburg's spell and it had just made him spew water out of his throat. It was awesome i just sat there like oh my god the whole time it really threw me and i just was not expecting that scene to be so brutal and so just downright disturbing and chilling it really got to me that scene was really scary to me and another really good scene that i liked was where John Walden went back to Petrus's little hut and was standing there trying to heal himself of the little wounds that he'd suffered while using the medicine bag to hide himself. And he was standing there and Petrus started talking to him. The decaying body of Petrus just started taunting him. And that was really spooky. I was just standing there like, wow, this is crazy. And I really love Salem. They just kill it, if you ask me. They're so awesome with the names being so historically accurate and still being so brutal and raunchy with it and just showing the dark and, and disgusting side of being a witch and what I would consider being a witch to be like. And it's just pretty crazy. I love that show. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Mercy. I'm so excited that she's back. I thought that she was done for when Mary Sibley had her burnt in the pits and it was just crazy that she came back. I didn't even think it was her. I thought because Mary said when the people that are dying of the pox come back, they will not be themselves. They'll come, you know, ravage the town or whatever. I thought that it was one of them, but it wasn't. It was freaking mercy burnt to a crisp. She looks awful and crazy and she sounds crazy. Man, she went nuts for a while. And then Countess Marburg arrives and I love the way that Countess Marburg arrived, by the way. But anyway, she came to Mercy because she had used the bees and found out that there was one that had strayed from the hive or one that was outside of the circle, if you will, one that was against Mary Sibley. And she went to Mercy and she told her, look, I can help you. I can grant you two wishes. I can help you cause Mary Sibley 10 times as much pain as she's caused you. And I can help you be a just as unscarred as you once were. And she takes her to her place, and that's where she has Dolly captured and strung up on the ceiling. And she sticks a funnel in her neck and just lets it drip blood onto her hand and shows her that she can revitalize her skin with the blood of her friend. And oh my God, that was cool. And Mercy was just so happy you could tell and she laid there and just bathed in the blood and let it wash over her crying in Countess Marburg's arms so I'm pretty sure that Countess Marburg has found herself a great ally in Mercy and Mercy is definitely one of my favorite characters um, but let's talk a little bit about how Countess Marburg arrived she came in by ship and they announced her presence and she walks up all glamorous as hell and i got her big bright purple fur on i mean it was awesome and she walks up to mary and she just immediately lets her know i've got the power here i'm the one in control and mary does not know what to do you can tell she is just thrown off by this countess and she is awesome i'm loving countess marburg she's played by lucy lawless who also played xena warrior princess and to me she's, she's looking very well for her age um but uh moving right along <laughs> um they were walking through the town talking together and you just can tell Countess Marburg was trying to get Mary Sibley to follow her and to be with her. And apparently Countess Marburg is the one who killed all the Essex witches in the past, not witch hunters. So it's going to be interesting to see. Increase Mathers is the one who's personally stopped Countess Marburg's 
grand right in the past. So I'm interested to see what happens here and how Mary Sibley talks to Increase when she, at the end, she pried his head off of his rotting corpse and she took it home with her. So I'm guessing she's going to make a spell and see what he has to say about how he defeated her in the past. And Mary Sibley's going to use that to her advantage. Um, let's talk a little bit about Anne Hell. I thought for sure she was going to be the witch that forges her path for good. But maybe it's showing that witches are never good. That even if they want to start out good, it never turns out that way. It never goes that way. If you take the left-hand path or any path, you're automatically doomed. Your soul is doomed to be Satan's. I mean, it's, it's just that simple. I'm thinking that's what they're showing. They've shown how a witch that just wants to become a witch um, comes into her powers and learns things and is mentored by people and also how she's manipulated easily by people. And it's also showing how a cradle witch, a witch who is born into her powers, comes into her powers and is manipulated by people as well. So it's pretty interesting to see what's happening here. I love watching how these witches develop their powers and develop the way that they're going to use their powers. It's really cool to me. And I'm loving what's happening with Anne. She has spelled Cotton to fall in love with her. And she killed Little Brown Jenkins. And Little Brown Jenkins came back to her. That was a really cool scene. I laughed my ass off when she looked up and said, if I still have a soul. I thought that was great. I love Anne Hill. She's just awesome. She's one of my favorite characters as well. Let's talk a little bit about Cotton being spelled to fall in love with her. He fought Magistrate, Magistrate Hill for talking crap about Hill, for being dirty about her, and it was pretty pretty great. It was an awesome fight. Pretty epic. I loved how Mary Sibley was standing there with Tenshiba and Tenshiba was like, surely Hawthorne will kill him at any moment. And Mary's like, no, it's the hungriest man that wins. And Cotton is hungry. And he grabs the knife and goes to stab him and she's like, plunge it deep, Cotton. And he just, ah, but he doesn't stab her. It was awesome. Just an awesome episode and probably the best episode of the season um let's talk about john alden he's not doing good he's been using that medicine bag a little too much he was gonna kill Anne hell and the medicine bag kind of messed him up there and he went into mary sibley's house to kill her and Tichaba captured him from what i've seen so maybe he'll turn around and kill Tichaba. we'll see soon enough but I don't think he'll be able to kill Mary because I think he'll see his son and realize, wow, this is my son and I can't do this to the woman that I've always loved. So I'm interested to see what happens with John Alden. I just don't see him being able to kill Mary. Um, I think Mary's going to turn this around with Increase's wisdom and his knowledge on how to kill witches and how he's vanquished this siren in the past. So I'm really, I'm really anxious to see the next episode. This season is awesome, even more incredible than the last season, if that's believable. So um, I'll, I'll talk to you guys next time. Enjoy and like and subscribe.